Hello, everybody. All right, so today we're going to continue with lesson 8.4, uh, fraction and whole number division. We're on page 371 of the fifth grade Go Math textbook. And our essential question is how can you divide fractions by solving a related multiplication sentence? All right, so if we look at the along the problem, three friends share a one-fourth pound package of beads equally. What fraction of a pound of beads does each friend get? So our division problem would be one-fourth, that's our dividend, we're, we're sharing a fourth pound package of beads amongst three people. So we can let one rectangle, the whole rectangle, represent one pound. So if we then take that one pound and break it into four equal sections, we'd have one fourth. We want to know how much would the three friends get if they just shared one fourth. So right now the rectangle is divided into four equal parts. I'm sorry, into the first, originally it was into four equal pieces. Then we're going to take that and divide it into three equal parts. Okay. Wow. Sort of equal. Sorry. Uh, just to get the idea of what it would be. So we started with four. Okay. And we had one fourth of that four whole, of the four pieces that make up the whole. We're going to divide that by three equal pieces. So we're going to take the fourth, fourths, and divide it by three. All right, so now we have 3, 6, 9, 12 equal parts. And when we divide 1 fourth into 3 equal parts, we're finding 1 of 3 equal parts, or 1 third of 1 fourth. So what would be 1 third of 1 fourth? It would be 1 twelfth. So the shaded part would be 1 12th of the whole rectangle. So each friend gets 1 12th pound of beads. Now let's see if that makes sense because we had three friends, right? So if each friend gets 1 12th, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 out of 12 pieces. 3 1 12ths, right? Well, I can divide 3 12ths by a factor of 3 and get 1 4th. So that is correct. Each person gets one twelfth. All right, how about this example? Brad has nine pounds of turkey, ground turkey, to make turkey burgers for a picnic. How many one third pound turkey burgers can he make? So our divisor is one third, and we're sharing nine pounds. So nine is the dividend, and we're dividing by one third. That's the divisor. So we have nine rectangles. And we're going to divide the <clears throat> nine rectangles into thirds. We're finding the number of thirds in nine rectangles. So we're finding nine groups of three. So take your nine rectangles and we're going to split them into three equal sections. All right, so we took our nine pounds of ground turkey and broke it into one-third pieces. So how many one-third pieces are there in nine? Well, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. We have 27 thirds. So nine divided by one-third is the same as three times nine. There's three pieces in every rectangle, so 3 times the 9 rectangles, and that gives us 27. So he can make 27 one third pound turkey burgers. Okay. 372. We've learned, or you've learned, how to use a model and write a multiplication sentence to solve a division problem. So here's an example. 1 fourth divided by 2. So we have four sections originally, 
And then we divided that into two equal pieces. Well, that's the same as saying one half of one fourth. What is one half of one fourth? One eighth. Part, uh, part B, we have four holes and we're dividing each of the holes into halves, which basically means we're multiplying the four holes by two equal pieces. So four times two would be eight pieces. So look at example A. Describe how the model shows that dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. So the model shows one fourth divided into two equal groups. Okay, two equal groups. Let's start this way, sorry. Okay, the model shows one fourth. Okay, so we had one fourth of the rectangle, and that's been divided into two equal groups. which is one eighth. Okay. So we took our one fourth, split it in half, divided by two equal parts. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And our shaded part is one eighth. So that also shows that one half of one fourth is one eighth or one half times one fourth is one eighth. Okay, one half of one fourth. Half of one fourth is one eighth. How about part B? Describe how the model shows that dividing a half is the same as multiplying by two. So in the model, the model shows eight halves. in four holes, right? We had four rectangles, four rectangles, and we cut each of them in half. Well, how many halves are there in each hole? There's two. So two times four will give us eight. So there's eight halves and four holes. Two halves in every hole. Two times four is eight. When you divide by whole numbers greater than one, the quotient is always less than the dividend. When you divide whole numbers, greater than one, the quotient is always less than the dividend. For example, the quotient for six divided by two is less than six, and the quotient for two divided by three is less than two. Learn, how, learn below how the quotient compares to the dividend when you divide fractions in whole numbers. All right, so let's look here. We have one half divided by three, and we have three divided by one half. So for the two expressions below, which will have a quotient that is greater than its dividend? 
So we're taking a half. Okay. We have one half. And we're going to break it into three equal pieces. All right. So we went from halves to sixths. So this one equals one sixth. Because basically we're doing one half times one third is one sixth. Because we're taking one third of a half. In this one, we have three holes. Okay, three holes, and we're going to split them each in half. We're going to divide by half. Well, how many halves are in each hole? Two halves. So three times two is six. So which one of these has a quotient that is greater than its dividend? Three divided by a half. All right, so we're finding the number of, well, the quotient, 6, represents a number of parts or halves that make up the whole. There's two halves here, two halves here, two halves here for a total of six halves. Okay, so we're, again, we're looking at this. Since, one, since my quotient represents the number of parts or halves that make up the whole number, three, this was three holes, the number of parts will be greater than the whole number. We started with three, but our quotient is six. There are six halves in three. In one half divided by three, we're taking the one half and we're multiplying it by one third as much because each piece of the half is going to be broken into three more pieces or six total pieces. So when I divide a fraction by a whole number greater than one, so two thirds divide by four or one half divide by three, the quotient will be less than the dividend. This one is going to be two thirds times one fourth or two twelfths. Okay, two twelfths is less than two thirds. When I divide a whole number by a fraction less than one, so five divided by one half, the quotient is going to be greater than the dividend. So, how many halves are in five wholes? Five times two. All right, so let's keep that in mind as we go to page 373. Number one, use the model to complete the number sentence. All right, so what is this showing us? Well, we have two holes. I see two whole rectangles. And I see that each of the rectangles is broken into fourths. Well, how many fourths are in one hole? One, two, three, four. Four fourths is equal to one. So we can say two times four is eight. Again, when you divide a whole number by a value less than one, your quotient will be greater than the dividend. There are, if we take the whole number and break it into four size pieces, 
you would take eight of those one fourth pieces t equal two. All right, how about number two? Write a related multiplication sentence to solve. One ninth divided by three. Well, that means we're going to take every one ninth and multiply it by a third because we're going to take each ninth and cut it into three additional pieces. So one ninth divided by three is the same as one ninth times one third. And so it would be 1 27th. And again, a fraction divided by a whole number, the quotient will be less than the dividend. Number three, we have seven holes. And we're going to divide each of those pieces by a half. So we know that the answer is going to be greater than our dividend seven. So seven divided by a half is the same as saying, how many halves are in one hole? There's two. So seven times two, 14. Write a related multiplication sentence to solve. A third divided by four. So we know our quotient for this problem will be less than one third. So one third divided by four is the same as saying take one fourth of a third. Because you're taking the one-third, okay, taking the one-third and dividing that by four extra pieces. So we'd wind up with one-twelfth. Okay. One-fourth divided by twelve. Again, I know that this answer is going to be less than one-fourth. So one-fourth divided by twelve is the same as saying take one-twelfth of one fourth and that would be one forty eighth six divided by one fifth we know the dividend is going to be i mean the quotient will be larger than the dividend six six divided by one fifth is the same as saying five times six because there's five one fifths in every hole so five times six thirty I guess I should write answers on the line, right? All right, so 30. Now number seven, two thirds divide by, a th by three, which is the same as saying take one third of two thirds. Take the two thirds and split them each into a third and we would get two ninths. If you take something that has three parts, and take those three parts and break and divide them into three more parts, that's going to give you nine parts. All right, number eight. Describe how the model shows that dividing by two is the same as finding one half of four. All right, so if we look at this whole thing, we notice that we have one fourth. So that's one fourth divide by two, which is the dashed line, right? So we took the one fourth and split it in half, and that gave us one eighth size pieces. Well, isn't one half of one fourth the same? Isn't that one eighth? Sure. So what's one fourth? Uh, what's half of one fourth? Eight, because we're taking each of the fourths and splitting them. In half. Okay, so Yeah, let's not say two equal parts. Let's say two equal groups is one eighth. Okay, so we took the one fourth, this one fourth, cut it in half, split it into two equal groups, and it gave us one eighth. And it also shows 
that half of one fourth is one eighth. Half of one fourth is one eighth. All right, number nine. Mrs. Lee has 12 pounds of modeling, modeling clay. She divides the clay into half pound blocks. If Miss, Mrs. Leah sets aside six of the blocks and gives the rest to the students in her art class, how many half pound blocks of clay does Mrs. Leah give her class? Well, we can draw rectangles to represent the 12 pounds of clay. Okay. So 12 pounds of clay, each of the, each of the rec rec rectangles represents one pound, and we're going to divide those clay pounds into half pound blocks. All right, well, 12 divided by one half is the same as saying 12 times 2, or 24 pieces, right? She sets aside six of the blocks, so two, four, six, and gives the rest to the students in her art class. So how many did she give to her art class? Eighteen. Eighteen one-half pound blocks. So if we were looking at a way to write this as just one equation, we'd start with our 12 pounds. Divide them in one half blocks, and then we would subtract six, and that would give us some number. Twelve divided by six is twenty-four. Twenty-four divided by half is one is twenty-four. Minus six, so n equals eighteen. And three seventy-four. The slowest mammal is the three-toed sloth. The top speed of a three-toed sloth on the ground is about one-fourth foot per second. The top speed of a giant tortoise on the ground is about a third foot per second. How much longer would it take a three-toed sloth than a giant tortoise to travel 12 feet on the ground? All right, what do we need to find? How much longer? to travel 10 feet. How much longer? What operations are we going to use? Well, we know we have to go 10 feet. And the sloth is going to cover that in one fourth foot sections per second. One fourth foot per second. So I know I have to use division, but then it says how much longer so I'm going to also use subtraction to find out how much longer it's going to take the three-toed sloth. So I'm going to compare the tortoise and the sloth. Show the steps you use to solve the problem. All right, so we have 10 divided by 1 fourth, and that's going to be the sloth. And 10 divided by 1 third is the tortoise. Okay, so 10, I take 10 whole parts, split each of those 10 parts into fourths. So how many fourths are in 10? Well, that's the same as saying 10 times 4. So 10 times 4 is 40 seconds. The tortoise, on the other hand, we're going to have each of its 10 feet broken into three equal pieces. So that's the same as saying 10 times 3 because there's three one-thirds in every hole, and 10 times 3 is 30 seconds. Well, 40 take away 30 equals 10 seconds longer. 
So a three-toed sloth would travel 10 feet in 40 seconds. A giant tortoise travels 10 feet in 30 seconds. So 40 minus 30 equals 10. So it's going to take the three-toed the, the three sloth 10 seconds longer to travel 10 feet. All right, and number 11. Jamie has a striped fabric that is five yards long and a solid fabric that is four yards long. She cuts the striped fabric into equal pieces that are one-fourth yard long. I was supposed to underline that, but okay, so I, I did it that one backwards. Okay, so we're taking this five yards and dividing it into one-fourth yard pieces. We're going to take the four yards and divide it into one-third long pieces. How many more pieces of striped fabric does she have than pieces of solid fabric? All right, so basically we're looking at five divided by one-fourth equals something. And I'll call that striped. And solid will be four divided by one third size pieces. All right, so five divided by one fourth is the same as saying five times four. Because there's four one fourth pieces in every hole. So if we have five holes, there will be five times four. So n equals 20 pieces of striped fabric. In the solids, it would be the four yards. There are three thirds in every yard. So four times three equals 12. So how many more pieces? 20 minus 12 equals eight. Eight pieces. Five divided by one fourth equals twenty, and four divided by one third equals twelve. Twenty minus twelve equals eight. Okay. So that's it for that lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to be working on interpreting division with fractions. So until then, I will see you soon.